You're okay, dude. Hello. Oh my gosh, two babies. Do you see that? You see that right there, everybody? Look at that. It's perfection. Hours of work and masterful planting and dedication to put it together and show you this. Oh man, you're not gonna wanna miss today's Project Mini Dragon episode. It's gonna be amazing. Welcome to Reptiliatus channel. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion. If you enjoy videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates, then definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging the little notification bell afterwards so you don't miss any of my future uploads. I usually post one video a week and quite a few shorts. Let me know if you guys have been enjoying those because it's actually a lot to keep up with and they're fun, but I wanna know if you like them. Today we're doing something very exciting. It's been a long time coming. If you guys remember back in the summer, I made a really cool video where we set up Littlefoot, one of my black-breasted leaf turtles, into a leaf Leap habitat, which is a really cool type of reptile enclosure. It's very easy to put together, very lightweight and practical, and looks incredible in a modular setting. Well, if you remember last video, we did an update on all the leaf turtles, and I hinted at today's video by saying that Littlefoot was transferred into a bin enclosure like the rest of his turtle comrades, and that we were going to be using the leaps for a very special purpose. Today, I'm here to announce that we are moving many of the red-eyed crocodile skinks and possibly some of the white eyes into a modular leap habitat system. I wanna take a quick moment to sincerely thank Leap Habitats for sponsoring today's video and for providing me with a whole baker's rack of leap habitats. That's right, they provided me with six enclosures and I'm very eager to show you all how elegant this setup looks, how practical and functional it is, and how it serves the space so well. And if that's not enough for you guys, guess what? I have some incredible updates to share with you. We have several new baby crocodile skinks born and not just from Sunny and Sappy. It might have taken a few years, but finally the fruits of my labor a lot of those pairs that we acclimated and medicated over the years are now reproducing. Some of them did it without me even realizing they had laid an egg. Some of them, I caught the eggs. But the point of the matter is we have at least two new pairs of crocodile skinks producing offspring. And you're gonna have to stick around to the end of the video for another exciting surprise because it's not just the red eyes that are getting to work. All right, I think I've given enough of an introduction here. Let's go ahead now and do an update on the crocodile skinks. I wanna show you all those babies and then we're gonna show you how I set up this rack of leap habitats and we'll move the skinks into it. This video is gonna be so awesome. I know you've all been waiting so long for a new Project Mini Dragons update. I'm pretty confident that this video should hopefully satisfy the wait. All right guys, so I'm gonna be real with you. I've given up on using filters in these tanks. The crocodile skinks are just doing their thing. But the issue is that they bring substrate into the water area over the span of a week or so after cleaning it. And then the filters make a ton of noise and choke up. There's just no real solution besides having a much larger water feature and maybe some sort of canister filter system going on. So part of the reason why you're going to see why so many of the animals are moving into a different style setup with water dishes instead of water features. Although it's not practical, I clean these enclosures out by siphoning them and by doing regular water testing, which seems to indicate that the pothos removes the harmful nutrients. This is the first pair I wanted to show you guys. So this is Elisi. I got her back in the summer. It's a female, and I introduced her to one of my males. If you look carefully here, there they are. They actually have a hatchling with them. Not sure if it's under here right now. It might actually be uh, under here. Let's see. Hmm, that baby's somewhere. All right, let's try and find them. Under the floss. Oh, no way. Oh my goodness. They have another egg. <laughs> that is awesome. Check it out, guys. Got another crocodile skink egg. Okay, I will put that back. So. Oh. Okay, everybody ran away. Baby, though, is probably spending time in this cord collar. So let's go ahead and just check on everyone. Let's see if we can find that hatchling. Guys, so this is the most wholesome thing ever. I accidentally startled the baby. Uh, from the other side and they ran and jumped on their father's back. This kind of shows you the maternal 
maternal care of these animals. But here we have a baby crocodile skink. This is the most recent baby produced by this pair. It's a teeny tiny little wee one as you can see. Oh, okay. There you go. They just jump back into the water with their mom. So this pair is doing really well, clearly. They have one egg, one baby. We're gonna leave them. They're not gonna get transferred. I'm going to wait till the second baby hatches because I just don't wanna try moving an egg and assuming that they'll keep taking care of it. I could incubate it myself. Bottom line, I just, they're happy in here. I'm gonna leave them. So this pair will not be transferred into a leap habitat for now because they're just so into the breeding cycle and doing their thing. And so yeah, they'll, they'll just stay. So that's one pair It has babies or a baby. Now we have another pair to show you all here. This tank is <laughs> planted quite densely as you can see, um, but we're gonna find the babies in here and I will show you what's going on in there. Okay, nothing over here, that's fine. What about here? Oh, we have one of the adults. Is there a baby with them? Oh, this here is the male that lives in this enclosure. He was one of the ones that was rehabilitated and acclimated. Uh, he has a regrown tail. As you can see, he's a really healthy weight and he's doing so good now. Bye, right, buddy. Whoa, okay. So I have a pretty good idea now where the babies are then. They're most likely all under this piece of wood. Let's have a look. Sorry guys, the angles are kind of tricky here. It's very, very dense. Hello. Oh my gosh, two babies. That is a fresh baby. We got a third egg down there guys. Oh my gosh, this makes me so happy. Oh man, so there's the recently hatched egg. There's one baby and there's a third egg right under there. Okay, let's check on the babies because I, again, I don't mess with my crocodile skinks ever, but I would like to, you know, check them and make sure they're eating enough and have a closer look at these little hatchlings. All right, guys, so there are the babies. And this is the mother of the babies. You're okay, my lady. You're okay. You're okay. Again, another animal that was acclimated from the original group that started the series. Some of them are, for example, missing toes and such, but they all are doing so well now. They've all done fantastic. So we'll go ahead and put mama back. I just wanted to give you all a chance to see her. So yeah, this is all very exciting. We have two pairs that are breeding now. This one has two offspring. Don't worry, you'll get your babies back from you very soon. Two offspring and the egg down there. So it's just gonna be so awesome. So here are the two babies. Uh, I feel fairly confident that usually that dorsal stripe goes away over time. It'd be super cool if it stayed. As you can see, this baby's dorsal stripe is faded. But this just kind of shows you how small crocodile skinks hatch. And not only this, it tells you how slow they grow. So on average, a crocodile skink lays one egg every 75 to 95 days. And the reason for this is because the female has one functioning ovary, so she only lays one egg at a time. But what's also interesting to note is how slow crocodile skinks grow. So what you're seeing here is about 75 days of growth on the animal on the right, and the other one is probably very young. I would assume no older than a week or so. Kinda neat to observe though, right? Okay, let's uh, put them back. And uh, then we'll put their sibling back. Oh, okay. I always get so scared when they leap like that. Okay, look at this cute little baby. My goodness, they're so small. Okay, go ahead, see watch. Boom, out of there, teleportation. Okay, so there you go. Okay friends, the first things first, we have to get these greenhouses out of the closet space because that's where the leap rack is gonna be going. So I'm gonna go ahead and dismantle everything, unplug all the lights, 
and start carrying all the containers of plants out. Once the space is swept away and clean, it's time to assemble the baker's rack where all the enclosures are going to be put on. Although it was actually my first time building one, assembly of the baker's rack was pretty straightforward and easy. I'm just so excited about getting this modular setup created, so bear with me as I put it together. There's a bit of a learning curve. I had to redo it and take it apart and put it back together a few times to make sure that I had the proper height between shelves. But I imagine that once you've done it once, you know what you're doing. With the baker's rack all set up, it was time to build the rest of the leap habitats. The more you build, the faster you get at it. I think I could probably build one in about 10 minutes at this point, so they're really not hard to assemble. Once they're all set up on that rack, man, it gives you a good feeling. It looks so slick, it's super cool. Next, I removed all the protective covering from the doors, and it's time to set up the misting installations. For this, I'm using a misking pump because it's gonna provide enough pressure for the whole unit. Now we're going to install all the nozzles, two in each enclosure, and add all the tubing line that will run the water to the nozzles. Lastly, I'm installing the mounting clips. These are amazing. I've never had clips work as easy. You just click them right into place. Normally they're a nightmare to push your light fixtures into. And by not having the lights resting on the enclosures, it allows you to slide them on and off the rack with ease. Now comes my favorite part, planting the enclosures. First, we're going to put in our hydroton drainage layer, which is those clay balls. Then we're going to go ahead and install our screen mesh, which will provide a barrier that inhibits the substrate from falling into that said drainage layer. From here, we're gonna add three bags of the Leap Living Earth substrate to each enclosure. It's a custom mix of sustainable cocoa, leaf litter, fir bark, charcoal, sphagnum moss, lichens and leaves, and it's bioactive ready. Next is my absolute favorite part. I've collected this beautiful arrangement of driftwood. It's treated, I put it out in the sun to dry out, and now we're gonna figure out the perfect layout, ensuring that there are plenty of hiding spots for the skinks and enough room to lay down a large water dish. We're gonna do this for every enclosure. It's gonna look amazing. Now that our scapes are all ready, it's time to plant each individual enclosure. I've selected a few different species of ferns and creeping plants that do well in humid and moistened environments that'll provide a sense of security and shelter to the skinks. Hopefully over time, they'll also grow in nicely. Lastly, we're going to add some leaf litter to the surface of the substrate. This will help retain humidity and provide our springtails with shelter as well. Okay, everybody, they're all done. Have a look at each enclosure and tell me what you think in the comments. I'd love to know your opinions and thoughts. I'm pretty excited to see how these grow in. And like I said, I'm confident that there's plenty of hiding spaces available to the animals and their future offspring. I think these enclosures will also grow in nicely and serve the purpose of reproducing Tribulonotus so well. With the enclosures fully set up, I went ahead and added a bunch of springtails into each of them, making sure to sprinkle some of them onto the wood, the leaves, as many different spots as possible so that they could colonize each little area and nook and cranny. So everybody, there you go. The enclosures are all set up. I'm so happy with how everything looks. The skinks are gonna love this. So let's go ahead now and transfer some of the animals into these enclosures. But before we do that, I wanted to test out the misting system, which as you can see is working so well, it's gonna keep all those tropical plants lush and thriving. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, if you had a whole rack system of leaf habitats, what would you choose to raise and keep in them and why? I'd love to know your suggestions in the comment section down below. As always, I'll give your comment a heart 
and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thanks. Sunny and Sappy's enclosures, the pair that started it all. Who? Anybody home? Oh, blech. They're all in here. Let me carefully lift up the wood. Looks like we've got at least an egg. They do have an egg. Ay ay ay. I feel so conflicted, but I think at this point we can't just keep Oh look, check it out. The baby there is eating the silkworm. Interesting. Anyway, at this point there's an egg here. We're just gonna have to move the egg and hope that they take care of it because we gotta move these animals. I think what we're gonna do first is move this egg because I really don't want it getting trampled or anything. But of course the rest of the family has moved into the water feature to make my life tricky. Gotta try and get them all out now. <laughs> so I'm carefully gonna take a little bit of this substrate that they hadn't really dug out yet. I'm just gonna cushion the egg like so. We'll safely leave it on the counter until it can be transferred over to a leap. I'm really hoping this isn't going to be a hard lesson learned. I trust that the skinks will hopefully take care of it in the new tank. I really would prefer not to move eggs, but so many of the pairs I want to move have eggs. Okay, look at these hooligans. The three siblings. There's two brothers and a sister, if I'm not mistaken. There's mama and papa. Yeah, yeah, nice try. You're good. Hey, come here. So this is the, I think the oldest. This is one of the young males I'd like to raise up. You can see, very clear male. But he still has a lot of his juvenile markings. But yeah, he's stunning. And he's happily living with his parents, which is pretty cool. Now the other two siblings are here. Well, at least one of them is. Oh, this is the biggest one. I lied. So this is the oldest male. Hey, buddy. And their sister is somewhere in here. You okay? So yeah, this is the youngest sibling. And she is she. This one is female, as you can see. So we have two brothers and a sister. All right. Exciting. So two adults, three juveniles, and an egg. Let's move them into the leaps. You're okay, dude. Dude, you're good. I promise I'm not going to hurt you. What is this attitude? Hey, 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 hey. All right, friends, so we've got our skinks here. Sunny Sappy, their three offspring, an egg. We're gonna go ahead now and put the egg into the enclosure somewhere safe. I'm actually gonna leave it in this little deli cup and nestle it into the soil. Hopefully they'll take good care of it. I am a bit nervous. I'm gonna put it under this piece of wood here so it's somewhere we can check back on it. And that'll be sort of our test because I don't wanna really jeopardize any other eggs. For the egg, I'm thinking we nestle it back here. Perfect little spot, lots of leaf litter, well sheltered. Let's hope that that's gonna do well. I'm nervous guys, really nervous, but I think that they'll be fine. I think they'll know what to do. So that'll go like that. And there's the hiding spot with the egg in there. Moment of truth. Do you wanna be the first to go in? Are you ready? Yeah? Are you excited? Oh boy, this is gonna be so good. Are you happy, Skink? Okay, go ahead. Does this look like somewhere you wanna live? <laughs> sure, just jump on the baby tears. Yeah, feisty little guy. What do you think of this? Okay, fine. Sunny, are you ready? Here, buddy, go ahead. Check it out, go in there. You guys are just jumping on the baby tears, eh? You're all going the same path. <laughs> okay. Let's try uh, bringing some skink to the other side. So this is the second male. Okay, buddy, what do you think of that? This will seem like a nice home for you. Okay. Looks like they're ready to go hide already. Perfect. Next baby. Go in with your sibling. Go ahead. Yeah, there you go. 
Go see what they're doing. Go check it out. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then last but not least, we got Sappy. Hi, girl. Yeah, I know. I got you. You're good. You're good. Sappy, look at this new home. You excited to live here? There. Go ahead. Go find your egg. Your egg's in there. I think you should go that way and go check on it. Yeah, go in there. Come on. Yep. That's where your egg is. Your egg's in there. Yeah, that's a beautiful animal. Hopefully she finds it and hopefully she recognizes it. Alright guys, fingers crossed. That's one pair in with an egg. I'm not sure if you guys remember, I had picked up a few skinks over the summer and they've been in quarantine since. And so this originally was a pair, or at least the person who sold them to me while caught. And let me be clear, they were really fresh landed. I decided to separate them. She was keeping them together. There's a male in here, and this is the female. They were kept together, but I felt the need to quarantine them. So we're gonna now put them back together. Very exciting. She's going to be housed with the male, and hopefully they will be a viable breeding pair. The male, so here he is. Oh, sorry, buddy. You're okay. You're good. Very, very handsome. I think I'm gonna put them up here. Okie dokie. We're gonna start with this male. It's okay. <laughs> I see you still. I can see you're there. Oh, never mind. You're gone now. Now let's get the female in there. You're okay, madam. This is so exciting, friends. How you doing? You wanna go into this new home? Wow. There we go. Another pair of T. gracilis. Until I get proper labels made, I decided to use my paint markers to label each of the enclosures clearly to clearly indicate which animals are being kept in which habitat. Now, before anyone gets too excited, I've decided that these are the only pairs I'm going to put into leap habitats for the time being. I want to monitor them closely and see how they're doing, and this also gives the other enclosures the opportunity to have their plants establish themselves better before we add them. So rest assured, We'll do an update at some point where we'll put a bunch of the white eyes in and who knows, maybe that other egg will hatch and we'll add another pair of tigracillus as well. At the end of this video, I really wanted to tease you guys and show you one of the new Tribulonotus novaginia. This is one of my favorite males. He's incredibly bright colored as you can see. Stunning. I mean, look at this guy's back. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Color is nuts on this guy. I can't wait to see what he does once he's breeding. But you're gonna have to wait for another video to see because I'm not showing you any more than this in today's video. I'll do an update on the new Novaginias soon. But for now, this is all you get. But technically I did promise you guys at the start of this video that there was gonna be a big reveal and surprise at the end. So here I am to announce something very exciting for you all. Guys, look, <laughs> this is so special. Triple Anotis Novaginia, the white-eyed crocodile skink. Nova's first baby. Look at the striping and markings on this animal. What they uh, lack in, in an orange head and, um, well, I guess future red eyes, they make up for in pattern. Let's get some better lighting here. See what I was talking about? All this pattern on the animal. See the striping, the banding coming in? So here, you can see the skink has beautiful markings. How exciting. We got our first baby white-eyed crocodile skink. And just as if things couldn't get better, while I was looking for you, I found something else that I need to show you guys. Let's put you back home with your parents. Go to your dad. There you go. Look what I found. So, we had that egg there, right? I lifted this cork round. And I was trying, oh, there's the same baby. I was trying to find baby, of course. And instead, what did I find here? Through rummaging around, I found not one, but two more eggs. This one looks like it could hatch soon. It's pretty big. And this looks like a new egg. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness, we are gonna be overrun with crocodile skinks soon. That's my kind of overrun. I'm excited. Well friends, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed watching today's video. It is coming along, folks. The Project Mini Dragons is not only just growing in size, but in setup. As you can see, this will hopefully serve as a very, very efficient and functional, elegant housing unit for the animals, and I'm confident that they'll settle in quickly and get to work reproducing to make some more mini dragons. With that all being said, if you wanna see the Project Mini Dragon series in its entirety, the playlist is up above. Thank you so much again to Leap for sponsoring today's video. You guys are amazing. Keep doing that awesome work. And I thank you all for watching. If you have any questions you wanna ask about anything, Feel free to also drop them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to answer today's question of the day, and I look forward to seeing you all next week for an upcoming video. Take care, guys.